Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Hugh from Loxon UK and I'm here today with the, uh, the latest in a series of onla online webinars that we're going to be doing looking at really, really deep diving into Loxon and what it can do and different function blocks, different aspects and different systems that we can control. So for this video, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at controlling a system that has multiple operating modes, but only one operating mode can be active at any one time. To give you an example of what I mean, picture in your mind a sliding door on a typical office building. Now that sliding door at night is fully closed, doesn't open for anything. During certain peak hours of the day, it may be fully open and never close, but during other hours of the day, it's probably on an automatic mode. So it probably senses when somebody walks up to it, automatically opens and then automatically shuts after them. And you'll quite often see next to these style of doors, that there'll usually be a key switch that you can change the mode between auto, hold open and close. And that's the kind of thing that we want to be looking into today, because of course we can do those kind of things with locks on. Other examples could be things like MVHR systems, where again, you would have an away mode, an at home mode and a boost mode, and it can only be in one of those modes at any one time. Very, very common in multiple control systems. Now our particular one that we're going to be looking at today is going to be around pump control. So in a lot of commercial buildings, you will quite often see something like that in a plant room, and that is a pump controller could be for a bilge pump, a sump pump, a circulation pump, doesn't really matter. But what we've essentially got on there, if you can just about see it, there's a black selection switch on the bottom left, and that will usually have written on it something like auto on off or hold on off. And what that essentially means is the pump is either completely off, it's completely on, or it's in an automatic mode, usually schedule based. Now, of course, we can do all of this within locks on. We can do that schedule, we can do a hold on and an off, and we can then also bring in other aspects of the BMS and building control as well. And to do that, we're going to be looking in a few minutes over at this demo case here, but fundamentally there are two function blocks which make this an absolute breeze. And the main one that we're gonna be using is one of my favorite function blocks is a radio button. And a radio button works pretty much just like that picture there. The idea behind it is that only one output of a radio button can be on at any one time. So just like an old car radio, if station three is currently on and we press station one, station three's button will pop out. And that is pretty much how a radio button works as well. Wonderful, let's get over to configuring it. So what I'm just going to do is I am going to change the webcam. So I am showing you the demo case instead. And then what I can do is as we move forward, I can switch between showing you the webcam in a small box at the top and showing you my config screen. So I'm now gonna change my screen over to config. And as you can see, I have a blank config file and I'm already connected into this demo case. So to break this solution down, as I said, we're going to do it as a pump control system. We're gonna be replacing a pump control panel. Um, let's say that this is a circulation pump and that, that circulation pump on the auto mode we want to run for maybe two or three hours a day. So let's sort that bit out first. Scheduling where we can run for a certain period every day. Now the most logical function block to do that with would be a schedule block. So that's exactly what I'm going to put down. Schedule block and I'm then going to take off all of the time periods and I'm just gonna say, let's say between nine and 12, Monday to Friday is the auto period for this pump. Wonderful. So that is the automatic time done. The next bit is the bit of logic whereby we can make sure it only ever goes to one operating mode at a time. To do that, as I just showed you in the slideshow, we need a radio button. We have two types of radio button, one that has eight outputs and one that has 16 outputs. I'm gonna go for the eight because that's all we need. We actually only need three. So I'm gonna make output one, 
Uh, I'm going to make output one the schedule. So that is going to be our auto mode. I'm going to make output two our on. And then I'm going to leave all off as off. So I'm actually not going to use the rest of these outputs and use the off mode for it instead. Excellent. So now that I've got that, I need to define the extra little nitty gritty bit of logic of how this is going to work. And I would say that we probably still want to have some manual interaction with this system, maybe even one of those manual, select, manual selection switches somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two digital inputs. One of those digital inputs is going to be auto mode. One of those digital inputs is going to be on. And then the important thing here is that selection switch, the off mode, probably isn't an, isn't an independent input. It's actually probably that neither of those two are on. Okay, so auto mode is output one. So I need to put the auto input to input one. I need to put the on input to input two. And then I need to define the logic whereby it doesn't put an output onto either of them when both of these switches are off. So I need to say that if either of these, well, if both of these inputs are currently off, it turns the radio button off. We have an input R on the radio button that will reset it. And there are a few ways that we can do this. To me, the simplest way would be that we put both of these inputs through an OR block. And then we negate or invert the output of the OR block by doing that before tying that OR block into the reset. And so what this will mean, if I go into simulation, is if neither of these are on, then that means that the OR block is on and therefore it's reset. As soon as one of these turns on, you can see that the state changes. Brilliant. So that's my three states done. That's my auto state, my on state, and my off state. Now I need to bring them all together. I need to bring that schedule block together with this radio button and make it all work in tandem. And to do that, I am gonna use one further block. If I just move those over. And that block that I'm gonna use is an analog multiplexer four-way. And the way that this works is I can tie values into AI1 through to AI4, and then there's a selection input to select which one of these input values goes onto the output. So what I can do is I can say that my schedule block is the input into AI1, and that my uh, sorry, and then I'd need to obviously have the on mode, so the permanently on mode, and the easiest way to do that would be with a constant. So I could have a constant that is called run pump and make that digital, and that will be option number two. And then I need my selections. So if I hover over that, it'll tell me that if S is zero, then the output is zero. If S is one, it passes through AI one. And if S is two, it passes through AI two. So what I can now do is on my radio button, there's actually an analog output, AQ, to indicate the currently active output. So now if I link AQ over to my selection switch, and then as a final point, have a relay for my actual pump that I want to run, and tie that into AQ and save all of that into the mini server. That is now my automation system. So if I just go into live view to show you this, as you can see, currently I'm not within my schedule period. So my schedule is sending a value of zero. I'm currently not within my uh, on period, because as you can see, both the auto and the on mode are off. If I move over to the demo case and switch on on, 
we can see there. Ah, sorry, that I just need to change that to be on as well. So my constant needs to be on as well. There we go. So now when I turn the selection switch to on, you can see that it moves to AI2, which has a constant of one, so the pump is on. When that goes off, it means that my selection switch has moved to off, so you can see the pump is now off. And if I, instead of doing live view, go into simulation, in simulation, what I can then do is I can actually pause that and change the time to be within the time period of my uh, schedule. Start that again. And you can see here that the schedule is now on. So it's passing a value of one into AI1. And then if the auto mode switch gets turned on, it then goes to the schedule mode. Wonderful. All of that working exactly as it should, replacing one of our old fashioned BMS pump control systems. Just going to stop showing my screen now. And you can see this on here. So switch option one. So if I move that, that goes to our schedule block. Now, currently at my time, it is outside of the time period that I said for my schedule. So the pump is not on. That's correct. Wonderful. If I turn that back off, both of these are now off. So that would be the selection switch being in the off mode. And again, pump is still off, which is perfect. And then selection switch two, if I turn that on, that would mean me going to continuous on. And as you can see there, the relay is now on. And that is pump control with locks on. Thank you very much for joining. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you again for the next one. Goodbye.